Okay, this is going to be part three of the integration by parts videos. And before we get started, if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the first two videos because if you don't watch those, then what we do in this video probably won't make much sense. So watch those and it'll show you how we've gotten to this point. Again, the formula for integration by parts, same one we've had before. The integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. Now in this video we're going to look at some trig applications of this and the problems we look at kind of fall into certain forms. So I'll put the general form of the thing down here. It's going to look something like this. It will be the integral of x to the n power times the sine of, and it could be some constant times x dx. So if it's in this general form, that's sine, but it could also be the cosine. So if you have x to the n times the cosine of ax dx. So if you run across problems that follow this general form, where you have x raised to a certain power and then either the sine or the cosine, then a good idea on these problems, and it will generally work, will be to let u be equal to the x term. <clears throat> so we'll let this be u, and we'll let the trig part of it be the dv. And then the same thing down here. Let this one be u and let this one be dv. So if you happen to run into problems that fall into these two general forms, then in general that will be your choice of u and that will be your choice of dv. So with that in mind, let's take a look at a couple of specific examples that do fall into this form. Okay, now what we're going to look at is this. The first one is just going to require one use of integration by parts to, the, to get the correct answer. The second one will be kind of like that last video where it's going to take a repeated use of integration by parts to get to the answer. Now, the only difference between the two problems, we'll take a quick look at it right here. The first problem is x times the sine of x dx. The second problem will be this, x squared times the sine of x dx. So the only difference is in the second problem it will be squared, but that's going to require the repeated use of integration by parts. So let's start with the first problem, which is pretty basic and straightforward. Now what we'll do is, just like we showed you before, we've got to pick a choice of u and v. So I will pick u to be x, and I'll pick this part right here to be dv. Now I'm going to use exactly the same process I used before. I'll set up a kind of a couple of columns here. So what this will be, I'll go straight across from here and I'll divide it up into a u and a dv. So this will be my u, this is going to be my dv. And remember you take the derivative of the u thing, you take the integral of the dv thing. So in this case, u is going to be equal to x, and dv will be equal to the sine of x dx. So that's what I've got to start with. Now again, take the derivative of this one. So just exactly like we've done in previous problems, uh, the derivative of u with respect to x would be 1. Therefore, du would be equal to 1 times the differential of x. Now on this side, you want to go ahead and, just like we've done before, integrate both sides. So I'll take the integral of this side, and I'll whatever I do to one side, got to do the same thing to the other side. So the integral of this side. Now again, if it helps you, think of there as being a 1 right there. So the integral of 1 dv would just turn into a v, and the integral of the sine is the negative of the cosine from your trig formulas. Now, normally you'd put a plus c out here, but we're going to save that until later on. Now, eventually we're going to plug this into the formula. Uh, u times v minus the integral of v du. So that's the integration by parts formula. Now remember, you need three things. You need u, you need du, and you need v. Well, just like in the previous videos, there is u, here is du, and here is v. So you've got all three of them. So now just plug them into the formula. So what you'd have would be, this would be equal to, um, first of all, u, well, u is equal to x, then v, v is the negative of the cosine of x, then minus the integral of v, but v is the negative of the cosine of x, and du, and du is 1 dx, or just we'll just put dx here. So there is v and there is du. So now it's just a matter of finishing this thing up. 
So what that's going to do, we'll move the negative out in front here. This will be negative x times the cosine of x. Now, two negatives make a positive. You can make this be plus the integral of the cosine of x dx. And what that's going to be is this is going to give you the negative x times the cosine of x. And then the integral of the cosine of x, you can look in your trig tables, uh, the integral of the cosine of x is just the sine of x. And then don't forget to attach a plus c. So the integral of the sine of or the cosine of x turns into this right here. And really, in that case, you're done. You uh, integration by parts one time, and you came out with the correct answer. So this is going to be uh, the answer using integration by parts. And in this case, it just took a single step. So one step and did it. Now that's true if you just have x to the first power up here. So in the second example, let's take a look at one that has an x squared, and what that means is you're going to have to use uh, integration by parts twice to get the correct answer. So let's try that. Okay, now the problem starts out exactly the same, and we'll still make the same choice of u and v. So this time our choice of u will be still be the x term, and then this is going to be the dv right here. Now again, I'm going to do exactly what I've done before, set up a couple tables. So my first table will look like this, a couple of columns. So I've got some, I'll put the u thing here, and I'll put the dv thing over here. Okay, so the u is uh, equal to x squared. So u is x squared. And dv is equal to the sine of x dx. So the sine of x dx. Again, find the derivative of the u thing, find the integral of the dv thing. So the derivative of u with respect to x is 2x. That means that du would be equal to 2x dx. Now find, you want to take the integral of both sides here. So integrate the left side and integrate the right side. Again, the integral of dv, think of that as being a 1, will just turn into a v. And uh, the integral of the sine of x will be, just like it was in the last problem, the negative of the cosine of x. Then you can put a plus c out there, which we'll add later on. Again, at this point, you go back to your integration by parts formula, which is u times v minus the integral of v du. Now again, you need three things for this. You need u, and there is u right there. Uh, you need du, and there's du right there. And you need v, and there's v right there. So there are the three pieces that you need. Now just take those three and plug them into the formula. So what this is going to be, it would be equal to, now first of all you need u, and u is x squared. So you're going to have an x squared. Then times v, and v is the negative of the cosine of x. So that will be the negative of the cosine of x. Then you need minus the integral of v, and v is the negative of the cosine of x, times du, and du is 2x dx. So this is going to be times 2x dx. So that's just a matter of plugging in the u, the v, and the du. Now, clean all that up a little bit. Uh, let's bring the negative out in front. So you'll have negative x squared times the cosine of x. Now here you're going to have, uh, I'll bring the negative out in front, which will make it be positive, and I'll also bring <clears throat> the constant 2 out in front. So when I do that, I'll have a positive 2 out in front of the integral times the integral of the cosine of x now I'm going to take this x right here and move it in front of the cosine, so I'll put it right there. x times the cosine of x dx. Okay, now in the last problem, uh, you did not have this x sitting in front, so you could find the antiderivative and off you go. But in this problem, it's going to require two steps because, once again, at the end of the first step, and we'll call this whole thing right here uh, step one, so we completed step one, 
But the problem is we did not get rid of all the x's. We've still got this x sitting right here, and that's causing a problem. Can't find the antiderivative of this. So I've got to repeat the process again. So I'm going to do kind of like what we did in the last video. I'm just going to put a set of red brackets around this thing and treat this thing as a completely separate problem. So what I'll do, I will reserve this part right here until later on, but now just look at what's inside the red brackets and treat that as a completely separate problem. So this will be my u, and this part right here is going to be my dv, and I'll just go through the whole process again. So again, what I'll do is set up another column. It'll look something like this. Uh, let's see, go straight across from here. And again, I'll have my u and a dv. And again, this time, u is going to be equal to x. So again, just pretend that what's inside the brackets is a brand new problem. So in this case, u is equal to x and dv is equal to, this time, dv is equal to the cosine of x dx. In the first step, it was equal to the sine. And you, just like you've done before, take the derivative of the u thing and enroll the v thing. So the derivative of u with respect to x is equal to 1. That means the differential of u is equal to 1 times the differential of x. Now on this side, find the uh, antiderivative. So the integral dv is equal to the integral of the cosine of x dx. Now on this one, when you do it, uh, the integral of dv, again, think of that as being a 1 right in here. Uh, that'll turn into a v, would be equal to, and the antiderivative of the cosine is the sine of x. And again, normally we'd put a plus c, but we'll reserve that until a little bit later on. So now, let's continue working on this. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is uh, I'll go ahead and do this. I'm just going to bring this part straight down. So I'll bring this part down to here. And what that's going to give me would be, it's still going to be minus x squared times the cosine of x plus 2. So again, what that is, that's just take that part and rewrite it again. Now I'm going to go ahead and put those red brackets back in because I'm going to replace this with what's in here. So using this part, now you're going to once again do your uv minus the integral of v du, but using this table over here. So this time, here's the u, here's the du, and this time, here is the v. So we'll put all those in. I think I'll do them in blue just so it'll look a little different here. So this time, u is going to be equal to x. Uh, v is going to be equal to the sine of x. Then minus the integral of v is equal to the sine of x. And du is going to be equal to 1 dx or dx. So, and then we'll go ahead and close the brackets on this. So what happened there is that uh, when you do this formula right here, it expands and turns into this. So again, bring, bring this part down and do your integration by parts on this part. Now at this point, it's just a matter of uh, distributing. So the next thing you've got to do is distribute this two. So take this two times this thing and this two times this thing over here. Okay, now what that's going to give you would be the following. It would be negative x squared times the cosine of x. And when you distribute this 2, you would have plus 2x times the sine of x. And then when you distribute the 2, you would have minus 2 times the integral of the sine of x dx. Okay, now we'll continue on. Um, and what that's going to give you, this would be equal to uh, the negative of x squared times the cosine of x plus 2x times the sine of x. Then you'd have minus 2. And just looking at this part, uh, the integral of the sine of x, finally you can find the antiderivative of that thing. 
So the antiderivative of the sine of x would be the negative of the cosine of x. And then don't forget to tack on, finally, a plus c out here at the end. Now in the final step, you can combine these two negatives uh, to make a positive. So it will look like this. Uh, this is going to be negative x squared times the cosine of x plus 2x times the sine of x. And then two negatives make a positive, so this will be plus 2 times the cosine of x plus c, and that will be the entire thing. So we'll put a box around that, so the final answer will look like this. Okay, so that one took two steps to get finished with. Um, and just a reminder on this is the reason he had to use the two steps, we'll kind of switch back to green up here. Um, you started with an x squared term here, and so you had an x squared right here. And when you did the first integration by parts, it took this and dropped it down to a single x right here, but you still had a problem to get rid of that x again. So it took a second step, so we'll go ahead and write step two right here. So this one required a two-step integration by parts, so this will be step two. Um, and then when you finish the whole thing, you came out with this. So again, there's an example of a problem that requires two steps. So the very first example took one step, second example took two steps, but it shows you how to handle integration by parts using trig.